The next topic we'll discuss is naming bicyclic compounds. Now for my students, I don't normally expect them to be able to name bicyclic compounds, but since you may see this in Wiley Plus, I'm going to go ahead and cover it and uh, cover it just briefly, okay? And we will see it in one of the labs that we perform in our actual um, laboratory, and so I want to make sure you're at least familiar with it for my students, okay? So bicyclic compounds contain two fused rings. In other words, we have a ring that goes, say, this way, and then another ring that may go, say, this way. Okay, so we have two rings that are fused together. Those are called bicyclic compounds. So notice if we turn this molecule up, where this one carbon bridge is facing the top, this molecule on the left is the same as the molecule on the right. So if you're struggling with that, you might want to use your model kit to make a model and go ahead and convince yourself that those are the same molecule. So if we want to name a bicyclic compound, we have to include the prefix bicyclo in front of the parent name. This is a fairly complicated process, and so, I'm again, I'm not going to go into too much depth with it. I really don't expect my students to be able to perform and do this on a test, but you may see it in Wiley Plus, and so I want to include it here. So notice where these, these bicyclic compounds are fused. The two rings are fused together. Those carbons where it's fused are called bridgehead carbons, okay? So there are two, there are three paths in this molecule that go away from the bridgehead, okay? So I've got the bridgeheads on the molecule I'm talking about in red, and then we have a one carbon path this way, and two, two carbon paths this way, okay? So let's go ahead and look at this molecule down here on the left, our bridgehead carbons I've highlighted in blue. We have a one carbon path to the right, okay? I'll go ahead and change color on that. I'll say that's green. We have a one carbon path at the top, and then a three carbon path to the left, okay? So we would call that bicyclo because it has two, two uh, rings fused together because it has these different paths, 3, 1, 1, heptane. So we start with the largest path, number it first, then to put a dot, then the next path tells how many carbons are on the second lowest, second shortest path, then put a dot, and then the third number tells us how many carbons are in the third shortest path. And then we put, uh, we close that in with brackets, and put how many carbons total are in the molecule. So this is unusual because we're not just finding the longest carbon chain, we're including the total number of carbons in the molecule, okay? So that molecule at the top that we looked at here is shown here, our bridge heads I've highlighted in green. Then we have a two, uh, two carbon path, another two carbon path, okay, and a one carbon path, not including the bridge heads. So that becomes bicyclo, 2.2.1 heptane, okay? So from your book, if a substituent is present, then the parent has to be numbered properly in order to assign the correct locant to the substituent. So to number the parent, you start at one of the bridge heads and you want to get the uh, longest path. So you begin numbering along the longest path. If there are substituents on that path, you want to try to give those the lowest number. So you want to not, and then you number along the next shortest path, then you number along the third path. So you're going to try to give your substituents the lowest number by doing it that way. Okay, so for example, here at the bottom, we're going to start at this bridge head and go one, two, three, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, because if you started at the other bridge head, okay, you got a lot number along the longest path first you'd say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that would give our substituent uh, a higher number. So you're gonna go as it is on the left here. If you say one, two, three, four, five, and then you brought us back to the other bridge head, then the next carbon is six, then the next carbon along that path is seven, then we number the shortest path with carbon number eight, okay? Okay, so what would this compound be? Without the substituent, this would be bicyclo 3, 2, 1 octane because we have a th three carbon bridge here, a two carbon path here, and a one 
carbon path here. Okay, so that's 3, 2, 1 octane, bicyclo 3, 2, 1 octane, and then at the sixth carbon we have a methyl group, so that'd be 6 methyl, bicyclo 3, 2, 1 octane. So I'm just going to do a couple of examples here to name the following compounds, okay? So we have these two bridge heads, okay? So we want to give our substituents the lowest numbers possible, but we have to number our longest path first. We're going to number the longest path, then the second longest path, then the shortest path. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get our parents. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons in the a uh, parent, which is the bicyclic compound, so that's going to be bicyclo, and then some numbers, and then octane, okay, because we've got eight carbons total. Now our paths, we've got a three carbon path, a two carbon path, and a one carbon path, so that's going to be 3.2.1, bicyclo 3.2.1 octane, so we're going to start numbering it this way to cover our longest path first and give our substituents the lowest number possible with our first substituent getting the lowest number, absolute lowest number po possible. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's gonna give us um, two ethyl, five methyl, two ethyl, five methyl, bicyclo, three, two, one octane, okay. So the next molecule here, we have uh, this this chain, this uh, six-membered ring fused to this four-membered ring. So where are our bridge heads? They're right here, okay? And what I've outlined in blue has six, seven, eight carbons. So again, we have a bicyclo, and then we have some numbers, and then we have octane. Okay, so we have to have three numbers in this bicyclic system to identify our paths. So not counting the bridgehead, we have a four carbon path and a two carbon path. Okay, so that's going to be bicyclo uh, four dot two dot zero. That third path has no carbons because there's no third path. Okay, bicyclo four two zero octane. Now we need to give our number our longest path to give our first substituent the lowest number. So that's going to be, uh, we start at the bridgehead in this case for numbering. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? So at the second carbon we have two methyl groups. At the fifth carbon we have one methyl. And at the seventh carbon we have one methyl. So that's going to be 2, comma, 2, comma, 5, comma, 7, tetramethyl, bicyclo, 420, octane. Okay, so that's naming. That's just a quick introduction to naming bicyclic compounds. I'll see you next time.